This is what the once great Soviet SLK plant looked like. A half-ruined conveyor belt, rusty remains, unassembled cars, a collapsed roof, mud and devastation everywhere. What happened to the once huge auto giant of the USSR? How did this catastrophe happen? Who was to blame and what caused such a horrible condition? The SLK plant and its car Moskvich. The story of the largest automaker disaster in Russia. Что нужно, чтобы построить красивый, качественный и надежный дом? Я бы начал с подписки на канал Goodwood. Автор канала очень интересно рассказывает о современных домах из дерева и камня, об их красивом и правильном обустройстве, какие при этом отделочные материалы самые лучшие и эффективные в мире. Уверяю вас, вы удивитесь, когда узнаете, какие инновационные технологии используются в Америке, Европе и даже в Японии. Например, вот деревянный небоскреб в Норвегии. Александр поведает вам, почему в России совершается очень много ошибок уже на этапе выбора участка. На канале вас ждут отзывы людей, которые живут в загородных домах, интервью с бизнесменами, архитекторами, строителями. А такие темы, как правильность выбора строительной компании или полезные секреты строительства домов, позволят вам приобрести бесценный опыт в создании собственного дома мечты. Если бы я раньше знал о существовании канала Goodwood, свой дом я бы построил намного лучше. Подписывайтесь на канал, и вы получите огромное количество важных интересной и самое главное полезной информации о постройке лучших домов в мире. The good old rear-wheel drive Moskvich 2140 was produced for more than 24 years with minimal changes. The management was well aware that it was wrong to produce such an outdated design, and it was already somehow embarrassing. What do the toolmakers care the most about now? What we are most concerned about is, of course, the quality of our products, but it's made out of many things. First of all, the fact that the staff is morally tired after 20 years of producing the same products. The Soviet citizens were buying outdated Moskvich cars due to the lack of choice. But at that point no one needed such a car abroad. Imports dropped to almost zero. In the 70s, almost all major European manufacturers switched to front-wheel drive cars as being more progressive and convenient. While Moskvich was still trying to sell a sturdy but very outdated car. The fact that two years ago we faced a very serious problem, which shook the whole plant staff. All our life our cars has had the prestige and we knew no grief in our sales. We exported almost 70% of our cars, half of them to countries with freely convertible currency. And two years ago, suddenly, on the New Year's Eve, there were 36,000 unsold Moskvich cars in the country. So the leaders of both the country and the automaker finally decided to make significant changes. The plant was given the task to create a new modern front-wheel drive car. Indeed, for how long could the current state of affairs be? Everything seemed to be fine, but for the fact that the designers of the plant had never dealt with the front-wheel drive. For all previous years, all the prototypes were created on rear-wheel drive platform and now they were ordered to throw away the result of all their long work and create a completely different car from scratch. Actually, not completely from scratch. The designers were ordered to take inspiration from the French model Simca 1307. This car was recognized as the car of the year 76 in Europe, and this was how the management of the Soviet automobile industry saw the future Moskvich car. Interesting design, traversally mounted engine and front-wheel drive, the design was simply 
simple and quite modern. Several cars were taken to the plant for inspiration, but the engineers and designers at the SLK plant were deeply shocked. They were gently told that they were not capable of creating the car themselves, their skills were not trusted. Igor Zaitsev, SLK's chief designer, recalled, We bought several Simcas, one of them was disassembled, the units were sent to the lab for testing, and the bodywork was given to us. Exactly with that we modeled the future 41s. It was very difficult. For a month and a half or two months I couldn't make my team approach the model. Everybody was so offended and humiliated that we were ordered not to just get inspiration from, but to primitively copy the car like that, down to the metal. But they didn't have to copy the car completely. The Simca engine was mounted traversally, and the Moskvich Uzam 412 engine couldn't fit under the hood of the car like that. They had to mount it along the car, and consequently had to change all the other units. Gearbox, suspension, body structure, it all had to be adjusted for the changes. The engine and transmission layout of the future Moskvich was more like Audi 100, with the engine in the front overhang, and McPherson and front suspension. But exterior and interior design could hardly be called a similar at all. All body panels, power elements, interior parts were redesigned by Soviet constructors and engineers. In general, after all the difficulties with unification and fitting of the parts, the only thing common between Simca and Fisher Moskvich was the roof and door openings. As a whole, they succeeded in creation of the new look of the car, which was later confirmed with protective copyright documents by all industrial countries of the world, including France. So, after seven years of development and modification, the future Moskvich gradually turned into a pre-production car. In 1986, the first new car Moskvich 2141 rolled off the assembly line to the fanfare and orchestra. We present an automobile created in the capital of the Soviet Union, in the heart of Russia. An automobile whose romantic name beckons to hit the road as soon as possible. A car with great future ahead of it. The visuals of the car created here correspond to the general direction of Soviet design, which prefers simplicity and laconic forms. Как 30 лет назад в СССР, так и сейчас люди покупали автомобили, авторынки и комиссионка. Вот два места, где в те годы можно было приобрести себе железного друга. Сейчас же, чтобы посмотреть и проверить сотню автомобилей, даже не обязательно выходить из дома. Все возможности по выбору авто вам предоставит Дром. Удобство, безопасность, информативность, большой выбор автомобилей – это только часть того, что даст вам Дром. Убедитесь в этом сами. Скачивайте Дром по ссылке в описании. It was a pretty large car, larger than Lada. The interior was not much smaller than even the interior of a Volga. The 72-horsepower Moskvich engine, though obsolete, was familiar to everybody. In addition to that, the most powerful 80-horsepower Lada engine installed under the hood in some modifications promised good dynamics, 0 to 60 miles per hour in 15 and half seconds. That was how the new Moskvich was advertised. It should have taken a niche between the small Lada and the rather large Volga. The price tag for this beauty was also rather high, 9,600 rubles, 53 average wages of a Soviet citizen. For example, the Lada 2109 cost 8,900 rubles, the most expensive Lada model 2106 cost 9,000 rubles, and Volga cost a cosmic 16,500 rubles. Moskvich were somewhere in the middle. No doubt it immediately became the most desirable car. A prestigious Moskvich, only the very wealthy characters drove it in the movie. What's going on? Did you steal a car? Does it matter?
You could not hope for a Volga, but Moskvich was considered more luxurious than Lada and much more expensive. Soviet magazines praised the new car, and advertisements claimed it was the best car in the world. But not long after, the passion for Moskvich began to fade. Assembly lines. The workers act here in a precise and well-coordinated way. Everyone feels responsible for the high reputation of their enterprise. Over time, the citizens got a taste of the new Moskvich, and it didn't taste good. Their quality, the first cars in particular, was notoriously low. The factory was trying to save up on the noise-proofing materials, so noise isolation was very poor. The interiors squeaked and groaned at every bump. The Soviet industry could not master the production of plastic parts of acceptable quality. Unreliability of the main units, suspension, braking system, gearbox caused many questions from the owners. The factory was very often let down by suppliers. Acceleration dynamics of the new car was also disappointing. For such a weight, only 80 horsepower proved to be not enough. And the peculiarities of the design, where the radiators had to be moved aside due to the length of the engine, led to the fact that the engine often overheated. But the biggest problem of Moskvich was that it rusted like a bastard. Rumors were that the factory had changed the painting technology to make it cheaper, and the new car could be covered with a brown flag in just two years. The owners used to joke, if you put a Moskvich in the garage after a salty winter, by summertime you would have to throw it away with a shovel. So bad was the anti-corrosion treatment of their bodywork. Moskviches sent for export to Europe were also heavily criticized. The clutch was clunky, the gear shifting was sloppy, body panels and interior panels fitted horribly in rattles. It was even noted that some of the bolt connections were loose. Export program of Moskvich 2141 was a complete failure both in Europe and in USSR. Its reputation was very much questioned. However, one of the most painful hits to the car's prestige was one tragic event. In 1990, near Riga, at a speed of 80 miles per hour, the Moskvich 2141 collided with a bus. The accident was terrible. The driver died instantly. The famous rock musician Viktor Tsoi was driving the car. According to the official version, the artist fell asleep at the wheel, but there were many other explanations. Viktor Tsoi was inexperienced as a driver, he was distracted while turning a tape into a tape recorder, some even thought of a merger, because Viktor Tsoi's songs clearly had revolutionary overtones, and many didn't like it. The speed of the collision was significant. It is unlikely that any other car would have been able to save the life of its owner in such a situation. Tsoi's death led to a serious resonance and was discussed for many Yes. All of this led to the reputation of Moskvich deteriorating even further. By the end of 1980s, things were already rapidly deteriorating at the plant. One of the many problems of Moskvich 41 was its underpowered, outdated engine. And the plant tried to solve this problem. Back in the early 80s, more powerful modern new engines were developed. They had to take a huge loan from Soviet banks and spend it on the newest and very expensive equipment for production of the new engines from Renault. They expected for the machinery to pay for itself in five years at best. The machines were assembled in the new production hall and they were already making the last adjustments and calibrations. Everything was ready for about 90%, but 
as many believe, the inevitable happened. The Soviet Union collapsed. The great power divided into 15 independent countries. Political and economic situation began to change rapidly. Nobody needed the plant anymore. The new motor production line was not started due to the lack of financing. After the collapse, almost all state funding immediately ceased. In this chaos, anarchy and complete devastation, no one cared about Moskvich. The SLK planned owed $800 million to the now private banks, but had nothing to pay it back. The plant tried to cut down on expenses, and this led to the fact that the quality of the cars continued to fall at a catastrophic rate. The citizens, having a taste of the important cars, were buying the domestic Moskvich less and less. The plant was sinking deeper and deeper into the abyss, suffering huge losses. After the collapse of the USSR, the plant was entering a new era with debts, appalling quality of the cars and the reputation of a producer of outdated vehicles. The banks demanded repayment of the loans, but there was no money. The factory was accumulating serious expenses, the parking lots were full of unsold Moskvich cars. This was going on for several years, and finally, in 1996, the assembly line of the Moscow automotive giant came to a halt for the first time in its history. But it didn't end there. The plant was not allowed to die so quickly. The former director was fired and a new one was put in his place. Ruben Asachan became the director of SLK. The plant was taken under the trust management of the government of Moscow. Yuri Lushkov, the mayor of Moscow himself, personally came to the plant to make rousing speeches. Do not allow the factory to collapse. Do not allow the production to collapse. Do not allow it to be dismembered. And do not allow the sacrilege to take place. So, year after a half of downtime, the plant was able to start up again. It was possible to get it running, but in a very strange state. They started making some very controversial models based on old Moskvich 2141. Meet Moskvich 2141 Svetogor with restyled front. Moskvich Yuri Dolgoruki, restyled front and elongated body, in comparison with the base model. Moskvich Duke Vladimir, almost the same, but as a sedan. Moskvich Ivan Kalita, an ornate radiator grill, different headlights, bridge equipment and a sedan body. Moskvich Duet, an ugly-looking coupe, shortened body. In essence, it's the same 41 Moskvich, only with stylistic external and minor internal changes. There were positive moments too. Future owner could order their car with an excellent Renault engine, and inside was possible to find an air conditioner, power steering, and even interior made of leather. For example, 2141 Svetogor had a price of $4,100. Duke Vladimir was $5,500. Yuri Dolgoruki with a good Renault engine cost almost $6,300. And the luxurious Ivan Klita with all wheel drive, they were cast like that too, was priced at astonishing $20,000, the price of, for example, Audi O4 or Volkswagen Passat. To promote its products and restore its reputation, the plant organized car rallies all over Russia. Every year, seven cars assembled at Moscow factory leave this square and drive around the country, and then they are greeted here solemnly afterwards. The fourth winter rally will go to 12 major cities in central parts of the country. It is more important to find out how well the cars are adapted to our country's roads. The people were shown the newest cars and were assured that these products were of completely different quality. Potential slogans and expensive presentations, the promises to expand the model range every year, it all didn't end well. The reputation of the plant was so deeply ruined by the low quality that almost no one wanted to buy a Moskvich again. The employees faced delays in payments, suppliers and subcontractors were not delivering components on time and thousands of incomplete cars began to pile up in the warehouses. Fraud and corruption was rampant at the plant, with the complete cars being told for less than the original cost, resulting in even greater losses. Things were very bad and it was all leading to a logical end. In 2001, the plant finally shut down, stopping all the conveyors.
а после остановки shutdown, the plant began to literally collapse. Due to that, the power, heat and gas supplies were cut off. The roof began to collapse in some buildings. Because of all that, expensive equipment began to take damage. A lot of equipment was broken irrevocably. Something was lost in this chaos, and something was stolen. Machines that cost hundreds of millions of dollars were sold to China, India, Turkey and Iran. Shady people were taking everything of any value to unknown destinations. Everything was lost. There was no way to save the factory. In 2006, the plant was declared bankrupt. And what is the result? Over 20,000 people lost their jobs. All the valuable equipment was disassembled, written off, sold or looted. And gradually all the buildings of the plant turned into a dangerous derelict site. Rusty production lines, remnants of bodyworks, unassembled carcasses and the ruined roof were all that were left of what used to be this great factory. Even the trademarks of Moskvich and its logo were sold to Volkswagen. All this is the result of all sorts of misfortunes and mistakes. The plant was not ready for the free market's economy, not ready to compete with imported cars. The fall in Saban due to the collapse of the country and massive crisis, numerous mistakes of the management, quote, reduction of the cars, loans, carelessness, frauds and just sheer bad luck made the plant cease to exist forever. Even though Moskvich was far from being perfect, in its best years people dreamed of it and cherished it as a faithful friend, that all has become only a memory, a memory of a once desired car. Farewell, Moskvich, Soviet legend, you will remain in people's minds as one of the symbols of your incredible time.